from um, Pressman Master Melt based in London. Um, it's going to give you a quick, it's what we call our makeover talk. So um, it's hints and tips about what you can do in your workshop in terms of um, keeping and reclaiming your precious metal waste. So whether you're working in gold, silver, platinum or palladium, things I'm going to explain to you now, um, some simple things, some a little bit more complicated, but all in all, if you do these things, it's really going to benefit you. So if you just bear with me one second, I've got a presentation I'm going to run through. So let me get this up. Okay, here we go. So who are we? As I said, we are Pressman Master Melt. Um, Master Melt was, well, all self-explanatory there. Um, Pressman Master Melt, we're two companies. We're all part of the same group, though. Pressmans do are the oldest bullion buyer in, this, in the industries. They've been in the Hatton Garden buying in sort of scrap gold and silver and jewellery from the trade since the 1940s. Master Melt was formed in the 80s to accommodate the actual sort of manufacturing side of it. So that's what we do, that's who I work for. Um, this is what we call our 30 minute makeover. It's not going to be 30 minutes, I'll, I'll, I'll condense it down. Um, this is a talk I've done and, and my colleagues have done to um, many um, colleges, universities, I've spent a lot of time up in Scotland doing it with all the colleges and universities around there as a lot of those are signed up to what's called the Ethical Pledge, which is all about recycling and reclamation. And this is what this talk is about. So this talk, usually pre-COVID, was going out to anything between 100 to 200 students a year between us all doing these talks around the country. So it's great, really beneficial. Um, so it can really help you. So this infographic we've got here, this is just a quick snapshot of a workshop. And all those areas that you can see there are areas where you can put something in place to capture any of the metals that you guys are actually working in, um, whether it be gold, silver, platinum and palladium, as I said. So typical jeweler's bench, um, some might have dogs, some have cats. I've come across all sorts in the workshops I go around. Um, all these areas here, so you've got, your, you've got your torch, you've got your drill, you've got your tray or your skin or whatnot. So all these places here are areas where you can sort of keep and, and capture any precious metals. So typically on the bench, you've usually got a little pot. So this is our little pot. We, we have a little level pot, you get the bigger pots, or coffee jars or whatever. What you want to be keeping in there is when you're working on your peg and you're cutting and you're filing, any off cuts, any dust that falls into your skin or into your tray, keep it all together, sweep it all up, put it into that little lemon pot um, and, and keep that. That's just one area of catchment. That's what we sort of, um, that's the, the higher grade metal. So keeping all your platinum, gold, silver and palladium, dust and off cuts is quite important. So that would go into a lemon pot. Um, and then the other area is what we call the low grade, which is what we call a sweep. So we're sweeping is, as it says there, wet wipes, buff sticks, emery papers, you, you, you polish your mops, hoover bags, old, old pegs, old aprons, things like that. That is to be kept separate. So keep that in a separate bag. I always tell my customers to put a little bin in the corner of your workshop and mark it up workshop waste only, and then just keep everything separate. Apologies about that. Bear with me. So as I said, this is the level pot. Um, over time, you can build that up, build that up, and then eventually you can send that in for processing where we can process it and pay you money for it, which is always good. So one area, um, one of the areas which gets overlooked quite a little bit is the polishing. So um, if you've got a good extractor, we know obviously that some workshops you're very limited on space. So even a Henry Hoover, as long as you've got some form of extraction, it's quite good. Obviously when you're polishing all the fluff and the dust that comes off it, keep all that, put it into a Hoover, empty your Hoover bag into a sweeps bag or the bin. Uh, and then that, again, that's something that, you know, you, you, you do capture quite a lot from there. Um, any worn down polishing mops, any mops that you've used, keep those. When they're worn down, they're no good. Don't throw them away, put them in your sweeps bag. And then a lot of the polishing machines, the little desk mounted ones, right the way up to the huge, um, the huge extractors, sometimes all have filters in. So they've got filters in. Those filters can be cleaned regular. You can hoover them down, empty the catchment trays into the sweeps bag. 
eventually change those filters out and put the filters into your sweep as well. Because again, all that area there is capturing any precious metal waste that you're working on. Uh, bear with me, so there you go. Polishing marks, extraction filters, yeah, your finger felts, any cotton wool that you use to wipe things down with, throw all that into the uh, into the sweeps bag. I do apologize if I'm rushing. This is the, um, the first time I've done this particular slideshow. This is a new one. So put that all that into your sweeps bag. Bear with me. Okay, um, this is quite a, a strange one. Um, a lot of people don't realize, obviously, when you're working away at your bench, when you're working on whatever precious metal piece you're working on, you get a lot of the material, you know, it goes onto your hands, it goes onto your bench top and whatnot. What people tend to do is either wash their hands or the first thing they do is they stand up and they rub their hands on their apron or their trousers or whatever they're working and all that all that metal that you've been working on just goes into the air onto your clothes or if you just go and wash your hands straight away straight down the sink so one thing that we do um we offer what's called a settlement tank so it's uh, it's, it's it's effectively like a, a small box that sits under the sink that captures any um precious metal that goes down the sink when you're washing your hands or if you've got a you know, a concrete floor, a wooden floor, and we're mopping the floor. Um, when you tip it down, you can capture all that. Also, ultrasonic as well. Obviously, cleaning your ultrasonic out. Some people just tip it down the sink, but they do capture a little bit in there. So when you've got a settlement tank in place, anything that gets put down the sink usually gets collected inside this tank, which over time builds up and we can get pros, you know, we can process it for you. Now we understand that space is a premium. Sometimes it's not always feasible to put a settlement tank in place. Um, a lot of silversmiths, it's, you know, it's probably not worth forking out the money to buy one, to put one into place, because obviously if you're only working in silver, it's going to take a very long time, but there are things you can do um, if you haven't got a settlement tank. So things like um, when you're entering your ultrasonic, um, you can either sort of slowly, slowly tip it out, get sieve the water off the top and then wipe it out, wipe the inside of the ultrasonic out and put that inside your sweeps bag, put the, the cloth inside the sweeps bag. Or the quick one you can do is you can get a coffee filter, get a coffee filter, um, a sieve and just pour it through, pour it through when all the water run off, put that coffee filter in your, inside your sweeps bag and then anything that's been captured in there, you can keep. Um, again, similar sort of thing to do with your mop bucket. Um, in terms of washing your hands, wet wipes, they are brilliant in the workshop and don't laugh at me because a lot of people will agree. Um, just to wipe your hands when you're working at your bench, you get up to go to the toilet, go and get your lunch, go and meet a customer, whatever you do, as soon as you leave that bench, as soon as you leave that piece that you're working on, get a wet wipe, wipe your hands, wipe your bench down, your peg down, your tools down, your lights down, your dog down, anything. You could wipe everything down with the wet wipes and throw those wet wipes in your sweeps bag. There's a pattern forming here. There's a lot going into this sweeps bag. So wet wipes are brilliant in the workshop just for capturing all that small fine dust that gets caught on your bench and on your fingers. So definitely, definitely get some wet wipes, wipe everything down and throw them in your sweeps bag. Sweeps bag. <laughs> uh, bear with me. Right. Okay. Carpets and vacuums. It's a bit of a grey area sometimes in workshops. Some people don't mind having a carpet in there. Other people don't like having it. Um, there's 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 pros and cons. Um, carpets are an absolute trap when it comes to dust. So when you're working on a piece and you're getting all that dust in the air or it's going on your clothes it, or in your apron, as soon as you stand up, it falls to the floor. Now it either gets walked out or yeah, either gets walked out of the room or, or just doesn't go anywhere. So carpets capture. So having a carpet or some carpet tiles underneath your bench is good. If you've got a workshop where it's sort of like a concrete floor, what we sort of recommend is so a few carpet tiles underneath your bench, which you can hoover, you can hoover that regular, you can keep that um, you can keep that Hoover bag when it's full and put it in your sweeps bag, and then obviously the carpet tiles eventually, if they get worn out, a couple of years or whatnot, they can actually go into the sweeps bag as well and, and be kept and processed. If you don't want to do that, then a doormat, some form of doormat, which is you know if, if you only got sort of got the main entrance in and out of the workshop, 
put something down there that you just walk over because you do walk a lot of it around so just something just to capture it as you're walking through there um you'd, you'd be surprised what you actually get out get from a carpet um and again vacuums vacuums are really good in the workshop obviously for, the, for cleaning the floors for hoovering your benches down hoovering your um your, any any filters that you've got if you've got extraction units hoovering out that out those once the hoovers are full once the bag's full keep that Everyone's got their own preference when it comes to what hoovers. Me personally, when I'm cleaning a workshop, I use a Henry Hoover. Um, they come with the bags because you can keep the bags. You can replace them. They're really, really good. Um, so a little bit of a, this was something that, when I'm normally doing this presentation, I'm normally doing it in front of a classroom. So I'm normally doing it to like 20, 30 students. So a little bit of fun. So what's the largest amount we paid a jeweler for their workshop carpet? So um, recently, um, we had a, a customer in, um, in in London and their workshop, been there quite a long time. Um, they were refurb, I think they were refurbing it or moving out or whatnot. So they wanted to get rid of their carpet. Carpet was cleaned regularly with a hoover and the hoover bags were sent in with their sweeps and stuff. But even so, as I said, they are a trap. So what's the largest amount we paid a Judah for their workshop carpet? I will show you. Yep, you are seeing that £31,000. So, yeah, we paid a customer £31,000. So, it was £31,000 worth of precious metals embedded in their carpet. Uh, pretty impressive. So, just going on to, as I said, a level um, is your clean scratch, so your, your, your dust from your, your, your peg, your bench, your skin, any offcuts of metal, any scrap. Um, this is what we call a lemel. This is what we call a high grade melt. Um, we do get asked a little bit, you know, oh, how do you do it? What's the process? So this is a little quick video about the process. So it comes to us, you either post it in or we'll come and it and it's sort of all dusty and chunks of metal and whatnot. So that's basically, it gets melted. So it gets put into an induction furnace, melted down into a bar. So this is just a little video of, of, of the melt shop, of a bar, of, of a, a melt being poured. So that's a lemel that's been processed. You can see the temperature it's been melting at. So it just gives you an idea. What would happen there is that that would eventually cool down and, um, and, and you'd, you'd be left with a bar. On top of that bar would be a layer of um, flux or slag or whatever you want to call it and that would separate that and you end up with a bar um, and that bar then would be tested. Um, the sweeps, this is another one we get asked a lot about is how do you process the sweeps, how do you process the carpets and the, you know, as I said, sweeps can contain anything from, you know, your, your carpets, your buffing paper, your all your worn down marks. I've, picked, I've got a customer I collect from and they have a lot of cuttlefish bone in there because I know you guys use it for casting. So how do we process that? Well, this is a totally separate process to a, to a level and to scrap. This has to be incinerated because of what's in there or, or what can go in there it has to be burnt down. This is what we call a low grade, uh, a low grade process. So this will go into one of our incinerators. Um, all this is based in Hatton Garden in London. This is where it all gets processed. So this is a sweep that's been incinerated at the moment. It gets put in, gets up to temperature, and it burns down to an ash. There you go. So that's the actual sweep burning down to a powder. What would happen then is that uh, that powder would be taken away and um, sampled. It would be tested in our laboratory in London for um, whatever particular metals that customer wanted us to test for. Um, we don't always charge for all four metals when we process material, because if you're not working in all four metals, there's no point. So whenever we pick a job up, or whenever you bring a job into our office in London, you will always be asked for what, what do you want us to test for? Because we do have customers who only work in gold or only work in silver and occasionally work in other metals. So. Uh, hazardous materials, we do have a few problems or we have had problems in the past with sweeps, um, with people putting things in there which they shouldn't. As you can see there, household plastics, aerosol cans, gas canisters, lighters, batteries, things that tend to go bang when they come under uh, a lot of heat. We don't want that kind of thing in our sweeps. 
Um, so there's a, there's a kind of a bit of a rule people say in workshops, don't, if, it, if it's dusty, don't throw it away, put it in the sweeps bag. Well, that's not entirely true. You know, it's a little bit common sense. You wouldn't, you know, you don't be wanting to put in any of those products in there just because they're dusty. Just get a wet wipe, wipe everything down and throw the wet wipes in. So yeah, we don't want things in the sweeps, which can uh, obviously cause problems for our staff and for our, um, our production facility. Uh, we do a little poster, so we knock this little poster up. We put that poster, we've got loads of these going around the country now on display in our customers, which is good. Um, really good in, in, in big workshops if there's a lot of people in there. Um, it just highlights, obviously, as what we've said, what we don't want. Um, and overall, at the end of it, it's all about, you know, getting a bit of extra cash for yourselves to do with whatever you want to do. You can buy more materials for your workshop, more products. You can go on a holiday, buy your car, whatever you want. But at the end of the day, we process it and we can pay you for it it uh, it doesn't go to waste and, and, and you get it all um this is something there's uh, yeah uh, there we go so that's what we do that's what happens that's the whole process so it gets gets made the dust and what's not gets processed into a bar it gets tested and then eventually what happens is at the end of the whole process once we've paid our customers and we've got all these all this metal that needs to be processed we then will send that for what we call end refining and that's when it gets refined all the metals get separated and effectively it just gets put back in so it gets alloyed back out into whatever product and then goes but it just goes in full circle so uh, it's a big recycling process so um we have all this information online um we have a free app you can download a free scrap app where you can check our daily scrap prices for metal. You can put, there's a calculator in there so you can work out what we've got. We have all this reclamation advice, a lot more in-depth detail to what I've said online. You can go online and have a look. Um, if you're really bored and, and really enjoy the sound of my voice, you can go and watch all these uh, videos where I'll go into a little bit more in-depth detail whilst I'm actually in a workshop. So actually showing you what Lemel is, showing you extraction, and showing you how wet wipes, they're just little 60 second clips, but they are really, really useful. Just go along and have a quick look. Um, follow us on social media. We're all on there. We're constantly updating. Um, you can contact us through all those. Um, we regularly put updates up there and share quite a lot of information. So please follow us on there. Um, and yeah, you know, thank you. It was a hope short, short and sweet. Um, but any questions, obviously, please ask. Um, we are here. We are. We're very focused on sort of getting out to people and seeing people. We're very approachable. So please speak to us if you want us to come and see you. If you want us to do these talks for any colleges or anything like that, we've got no problem doing it. If you want to use our services, please get in touch. There's four of us on the road. We cover the whole of the UK. Um, we're not an agent, we're not a middleman. You deal direct with us. So you get more money basically. So whenever we collect anything, we process everything in house, which is quite important. There's a lot of people out there offering the services that we do but there's not many people that actually do do it themselves. So if you are using other companies, um, that's fine. Just if you wanted to give us a try then, please do. Um, so I will stop sharing my screen now. Um, hey Mark, that's, that's great. Excellent, thank you very you much. I can see a, a few questions. There. And we've had, I don't know whether you've noticed, um, but we've had quite a few questions come up on the chat box. I didn't see uh, it. To be honest, because I, I was too busy, it, was, it wasn't showing yeah, me, but I'm just going through. That. I can see actually, Simone, my colleague. Yeah, Simone has been has been answering some of these as we've as we've uh, come um, to them. But uh, sure, can I just say? Can I just say one of the um one of the questions that's got brought up quite a lot is is can they mark can our the guys mix the metals? So absolutely, if gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. And also copper, or if they've got a bit of stainless yeah, steel, other, non yeah. other metals. What what do they do with that? And do they have to separate it? No, not at all. It makes no difference whatsoever in terms of processing the material. Um, no, they can all be melted together. We I do have customers who like to keep their metals separate just for a personal reason. So they like to see how much they've been using, how much wastage they're actually getting from each metal, which is which is great. But effectively, when we process it we can melt all metals together. Our, our equipment is capable of getting up to temperature to melt palladium and platinum. So that's not an issue whatsoever. Um, as I said, when we collect it, when we, when, when we book in a job or anything like that, we will always ask you what metals are in there. So, you know, yes, you can, you know, it doesn't matter if there's 
bits of copper in there, bits of stainless steel, um, bits of wax, bits of wood. It doesn't matter because effectively anything that's non-precious is going to burn off. So, yeah, it doesn't matter if your metals are mixed. Um, if you want to keep them separate um, and send them into separately, we can process them obviously separately. Um, however, it is more cost effective for yourself because obviously there is a free a fee for these processes. We do charge. Um, it's you know for a, for a lemon for uh, it's twenty five pounds a process, and then there's assay charges on top. So if you wanted each metal tested separate, you're paying for an individual melt. So it's more cost effective just to do it as one job, and then we can assay it accordingly. So yeah, that's not an issue. If your metals are mixed, if you can't keep them separate, it really does not matter. I think I think Mark, you've just answered another question that's come up, uh, which that was. Uh, roughly the cost effective amount of sweets uh, to be processed yeah i mean okay. are we talking are we talking kilograms okay, yeah that's something that we get asked yeah so okay let's just start with a lemon so if you are if you're only if you're if you're only working in silver um what we recommend is usually about 450 to 500 grams of silver scrap or dust um anything less than that is just not really worth it you know obviously oh, it's sure. 25 it's 25 pounds of process it's 15 pound for a silver assay and then after that whatever's there after that obviously we probably pay yourself at a rate so on a silver level if it's just silver yeah anything less than sort of 500 450 to 500 grams just keep it and just keep building it up um if it's a sweep so things like your memory papers and all that you know the low grade waste if you are only working in silver you do need quite a lot for that we do we normally recommend a minimum of about 10 kilos i know that sounds a lot but you know the golden rule is you don't throw anything away so over time it will build up now if you're working in other metals if you're working in gold and platinum and palladium then yeah that's totally different so so for, for a gold level or a, or a platinum level or a palladium level then, you know, we normally say anything around about 40 to 50 grams minimum, we can we can process that and, and, it, and it's cost effective to do that. A sweep, we usually say if, if you if you've got a gold sweep um, or a mixed metal sweep, but there's a but there are precious metals in there like gold, platinum and palladium, then usually around about one and a half kilos to two kilos minimum. It, 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 it's it's worth, it, you know, it's worth doing. At the end of the day, we don't know what's in there you don't know what's in there completely so you know unfortunately sometimes there are occasions where there isn't enough you know some people have high expectations of what they're going to get out of a job but it doesn't always work like that um but we will always try to offer our advice and recommendation as best we can okay uh two more questions that have come up um in terms yeah. of the lemon um would titanium in that mixed lemon be a problem to your processing not that I'm aware of, Simone. Do you know anything about that one? I've never come across that question before. So, um, so basically, on because it's um, with the high melting point of titanium, it can be a problem if we have large amounts of it. But if you're talking about small, tiny offcuts of it, it's not a problem. But if you're throwing a titanium ring in there, then that might cause a problem. Not necessarily to us but mostly to the melt it doesn't homogenize very well which then causes a problem with the results so in turn it's worse for the customer so ideally keep titanium um in your lemon to a minimum sweeps is fine um but again same thing keep it to a minimum if possible just because okay. it's such a hard metal okay super thank you uh one more question that's come up if you have metals separated can you get refined metal back as opposed to being paid the value? For instance, the fineness like 18 carat or platinum. Like, yeah, yeah, we know what you mean. Yeah, we, we, don't, um, we don't sell findings. We don't sell findings. We don't sell metal or wire or sheet. We, we don't do that. What we can do is for, for gold and silver, we can um, offer casting grain. So we can offer fine gold casting grain or fine silver casting grain, um, but we don't, as a company, we don't offer any sort of uh, any metals, in, you know, like like um, like sheets or wire. No, we don't. That's fine. Well, that's, that's a good answer. That's good and actually useful. I'm just, I'm just seeing. So I can just see most people. some of the people online. I can see. I've, I've, 
some of my custom Eleanor's on there. I've, I've dealt with Eleanor in the past. Dalvis, I've dealt with Dalvis in the past. So yeah, I can see these yeah. guys online, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everyone. Okay. Um, yeah, can I can see. Um, yeah, yeah, far away. Go on, sorry. No, I'm just going to ask if there are any more questions because that's that's all that I've uh, had coming up on uh, on my chat box. So I just wondered if there are any more. Whether you know you, you you've made some good answers and Simone has as well, um, and she's been uh, uh, answering those questions as they came up um, during the uh, during the chat. So that, that's brilliant. You know, there's a lot of information, and we're getting a lot of replies here, responses saying, you know, really really interesting, um, and actually, yeah, well, Ella's just yeah. got a good one here. What is the cost of a settlement tank? A settlement tank, right? Okay, you're going to bear with me one second on this one because we've just ha I had to update the prices because the prices have gone up from our uh, our supplier on these. So a small settlement tank, Simone, feel free to jump in because I can't find the email. <laughs> it's two so two hundred and sixty five uh, pounds plus VAT. Uh, I would highly doubt that anyone would need a large one. A large one would probably be for a huge manufacturer of. 20 plus people so um yeah a, a small settlement tank but uh if you're working in gold and platinum and well pretty much palladium then it's really really cost effective you'll get that money back pretty quickly right okay super well i hope that uh, answers uh, uh, well all of the questions really uh, that people yeah. have, uh, have been uh, if you want any more advice or, or hints and tips or anything, or you want someone you want us to drop you out a sweeps bag or anything like that, then 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 please just get in touch with us. I'm just typing my email address in the chat if you wanted to drop me an email. There we go. Um, yeah. if you wanted to email me, then please do. And I can either get one of the, the local guys to come out and see you or, or whatnot. Um, but Excellent. like I said, there's all these little Excellent. hints and tips videos online. So have a look at those through the website if you want. And thank you for inviting us along. And I hope it's been informative for you all. Um, and yeah, just thank, right. thanks for thanks for letting us get involved. Okay, cheers, super. Thanks very much again. All right, no yeah. worries. We'll uh, okay. we'll leave you to the rest of your meeting. Thank you. Bye. Thanks everyone. See you soon. Take care.